Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Normally, we, we take the first few seconds of the show to introduce our guests, but today I thought maybe I should, I should just give a warning, issue a warning, because we have Matt Swaim, who's uh, very much involved, involved with the Journey Home Ministry and also is the Sunrise Morning Show, one of the Sunrise Morning Show hosts every morning on the EWTN Network. And uh, so just suggest that maybe you hide your women and children and... and uh, Beware, because Matt Swaim is in the house. We'll be right back. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, everybody. This is Bear Wozniak. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. And my wife, uh, Cindy, made a big mistake for Christmas. She's heard me saying, I love to golf. I love to golf. But I never get to golf because I have some clubs I found down by the <laughs> dumpster, <laughs> really bad golf clubs. And she said, well, that's ending today. And we went and got Bear a little set of golf clubs. And it was like going down the slippery slope, as St. Augustine would say, one of his terms. Uh, and, uh, but yesterday I was at the driving range practicing uh, my swing as far away from the rest of the people as possible because it's pretty embarrassing. And I got my, my, my golf shoe, got stuck in the mat, and uh, I, pull, I, I pulled a hip muscle. A ten, something in there got, went pop. And, uh, and so it came very much to life to me uh, what happened to Jacob when he was wrestling with the angel of the Lord, when he was wrestling with Jesus in the desert in the middle of the night? He's camping out, probably sleeping with a rock, you know, trying to sleep on a rock and said, having trouble sleeping probably. And then the angel of the Lord stump, steps up and just starts, just starts fighting with him. How many of us in our lives feel like maybe sometimes we're fighting with God? That... Um, and it wasn't like he chose the fight. God, came, God showed up, and they started grappling. They started fighting, and they fight, fought all night long. And you know what happens when you're a fighter and you're losing? Uh, you tend to close distance. You know, you, you, you grab onto your opponent because then they can't swing as hard. It doesn't hurt quite so much. Uh, and so he gradually he closed di distance, and he said, I won't let go until you bless me. And the angel of the Lord then hit him in the hip socket. <laughs> <laughs> and then gave him a new name, so I don't, and, and it changed his name from Jacob to Israel. From that moment, his life and, and walk with the Lord was different. You know, he there is that kind of hesitation that he had in his step. He probably didn't walk with a limp, but there was probably a certain hesitation every time he stepped because he said that says as he was wounded there for the rest of his life. And I know yesterday when I walked the two blocks down to the doctors of Waikiki. I walked a little bit more slowly, a little bit more carefully with that hip. And it reminds me, that's how we need to be as believers. We need to kind of walk with a moment of hesitation and check in with the Lord and say, Lord, what is your will in this situation? What is your will, uh, not just in this situation, but maybe you want me to put myself in a situation. Like this morning at coffee, <clears throat> a friend of ours was there, Peter, who we just love. He's a jazz pianist, and uh, he just didn't seem to be the normal disposition and so I just made a point I just felt you know you, if you're looking at people's countenance you can kind of see uh, maybe the Lord's face there too and what he wants to say to them and I just went over and checked on him and he said yeah I'm going over you know taking care of all my mother's belongings right now we lost her about six months ago so it was just a moment of just being um, a nudge of the Holy Spirit and giving that person grace so in your life walk a little bit with a limp check in with the Lord and then uh, you'll be moving in God's power so we're here with Matt Swain. And uh, those of you who don't watch the video version of this show, you're missing out. you got to go to deepadventure.com, subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get this show, our shows, six weeks early, or you can go to our Bear Wozniak YouTube and subscribe there, and you get to see what Matt Swain looks like. I think you have more hair than normal, though, don't you, Matt, right now? Well, I haven't shaved it all in a couple of days, so i got a I'm little about, stubble. But down here, going. when is the last time you – when did you start oh, growing your beard? Oh, my beard, beard. yes. Yeah. Your so, manly um, – North, north, per this northern is, beard. This is my Lenten beard, so we'll, we're going to keep this going till Easter. Um, so uh, can we do I'm another gonna... interview before you shave it? 
we we got to you know usually i pare it down um and i and i go down to the the sort of hulk hogan you know rally yeah, mustache depending like on mine. you know yeah so by that point we'll be in the early part of the baseball season and and you know hopefully we'll do something to help you know cheer on my cincinnati reds perhaps against your la dodgers we'll see what we'll see what happens it usually takes it goes away in stages yeah the spring is spring baseball is so cool because it kind of lets people know winter's almost over right and oh it's beautiful just hang on i mean it's been really brutal here it's 79 degrees here today so oh, it that got, sounds terrible it got below 80 degrees so it's pretty let me check the surf and the surf is so what happens here is in the springtime we start to get our swells start coming in again on the on the south shore and in the summers when we get our big surf here in the south shore so it's starting to wrap around a little bit but um, you know, I saw a picture of you here. Can you show us that record album you have in the oh, background? Oh yeah. So, so um, this is not actually me, despite what Bear no, says. No, no. Wait. Show that close. People are watching on YouTube. This is back when Matt and I had our band. I'm the drummer over That's here. That's Bear on the drums. And uh, Matt, I can't pick you out exactly. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I'm on the bass guitar behind there. The the standing oh, yeah. piano. Oh yeah. The man in the man in black, right? The bass guitar always. That's right. Yeah. You're, the you're story hit- behind this is not actually me. This is the Precious Memories by the Living Stones Quartet, recorded in uh, uh, sometime in the '70s. I one of the things I like to do when I go into you know thrift stores is I like to check out the the vinyl collection and pick up. You can't see, but behind me you there's got- also the uh, yeah. the Travelers Quartet, a West Virginia gospel quartet. But if you can see in the picture, there's eight of them. So, so it's I not exactly know. a quartet. <laughs> not a quartet. <laughs> well, but you know, but I love they're these from the, They're mountain folk. They don't get their adding and subtracting that. It's good it's two quartets. It's, it's two, two quartets. Quartet. That's that's yeah. That's so cool. But that that picture is so. I mean, I think that that actually did look like me when I was young. But how old do you think that kid is on the drums in that picture? Oh, he can't be more than ten. Yeah. You know? Well, when I was ten, I had a butch haircut. I had a haircut almost like you were today when I was young. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's I didn't start growing my hair out real good and be, being like a real rock and roller until I was probably, you know, 14, 15, 16. But weren't you raised a Protestant? I was a Protestant, right? And of course, we never used that word. We just used the word Christian. Um, yeah, you know, that's a good word. I didn't that's know any word. Catholics. And, and now the, nowadays, uh, I didn't start using the word Protestant on myself until, you know, I got to, you know, post-college and started talking to Catholics. And I was just trying to tell them what I was that was different from them. But yeah, but, evangelical, generally speaking, um, Nazarene, Free Methodist. Yeah, it's so weird how people will use the phrase. Uh, I'm not. A, uh, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Catholic. All the people say that because Christian kind of means Protestant. You're like, I mean, uh, I, yeah, you're the. You're, I would say I'm a Catholic sure. Christian is what I say. But okay, so now, but big, back in those Protestant days, you uh, had a band, right? Did you have a Christian heavy metal band? I had a few or of them. Isn't that hard? How does Christian and heavy metal? We were out golfing the other day. Well, it's and a this mix guy's of playing playing like. Uh, I don't know, like Eagles music, and I said that was narcotic uh, Satan's music. <laughs> the guy thought I was serious, <laughs> but no. So tell me about how you. What, oh, tell man. me about Christian Even, heavy metal. What is that? Oh sure. So um, I mean, I, I started off kind of like more Christian, sort of pop rock uh, stuff, and then got into kind of more indie underground, you know, Christian rock, and then I, you know, played some acoustic stuff, and even got involved in a hip hop act at one point, and then sort of the last band I was in was sort of a Christian sort of prog metal, you know, uh, sort of like Rush, except for heavier. Um, but, you know, the, the, uh, My wife you know, the rationale loved we music. used is, is she might have been into it. You know, we, yeah. we sang about all kinds of stuff. You know, one of the things that was interesting to me about um, Christian underground music was that, you know, in the form of Christianity I grew up, it wasn't prosperity gospel at all. Mm. But it was very much a pressure to kind of look right and and sound right and behave right and put on kind of like a an image for yourself and you know by the time you get to be a teenager and you realize that you're actually a sinner you're like well i I can't keep this act up very well (laughs) right and uh and you discover some of these christian underground bands and you're listening to like contemporary christian pop radio and you're hearing you know god's amazing and life is good and you know he will turn your you know your your tears into joy and everything i'm like well yeah sometimes that works for me but sometimes i'm having a hard time and you know you hear some of these underground musicians, so they're singing stuff that sounds a lot more like what the psalmist is saying. Right. You know, about I'm having I'm having a rough. There, there was a sort of a sincerity and a reality to it. Right. Um, and 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 there was uh, actually you know kind of like a almost like a like a parachurch movement among sort of underground Christian bands um, of sort of like these people who just didn't feel like they fit in at a at a regular church because if you bear in mind um protestant churches aren't like catholic churches you walk into a catholic church and it's literally everybody in your town who's a catholic 
doesn't matter what race they are, how old they are, how young they are, how rich or poor. Whereas Protestant churches tend to be made up of kind of all people who are interested in the same stuff. Yeah, right. right. Interesting. And, and have same similar socioeconomics. And so, so yeah, I got into the underground uh, Christian punk metal alternative and all that. And, uh, and if you, if you think that there's not some, I mean, look at the heavy metal albums and what they're looking for. I mean, we as, as Catholics are all about, I mean, I've got an icon with like these guys climbing a ladder and devils trying to shoot them off the ladder as they go up. I mean, that might as well be a heavy metal album cover. Right? Yeah, I was saying it should. You, when um, are you going to get the band back together, dude? I know, I know. Um, we're, but, but we're talking with Matt know, Swaim. We got to take a break, Matt. I'm talking with Matt Swaim. Uh, he's the host of the Sunrise Morning Show, one of the hosts, and also uh, a producer there at the Journey Home. I don't know what all you do there, but oh, heavy really metal, does. heavy metal musician, and uh, just the greatest guy. I just love. We talk. We talk together every week on his show. So I thought I'd drag him over here and let you guys put up with him a little bit, too. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan LeBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Buckaroo. What brand do folks put on you? No doubt some good and some bad. Lots of terms for cowboys, cow hand, cow poke, cow puncher, ranch hand, herder, Brush popper, never heard that one, did you? And buckaroo. Was a time in Arizona when cowpokes resisted being called cowboys due to the outlaw gang known as the Cowboys, who notoriously tussled with Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. From dime novels, the popularity of rodeos, and Hollywood producing western movies, the term cowboy rose to the top and stuck. I do admit having a personal liking for buckaroo has a certain feel when you pronounce it, with a sort of wholesome tune when you get to the roo and buckaroo. Herders were multi-ethnic. Most trail drivers were veterans of the Civil War, Confederate and Union, with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% being freed slaves. Others were European immigrants, Mexicans, and American Indians. Christianity is indeed multi-ethnic, Bible types called by a number of names, some good and some not so good. Essentially, Christian means little anointed ones or followers of Christ. We've been called hypocrites, fundies, Bible bashers, hateful, and so on. Sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Not to worry. The key is following and imitating Christ in word and deed. Jesus said we would be known by the fruit we bear. Hopefully our fruit looks wholesome to others because, well, it, it is wholesome. Keep in mind, though, our fruit will be ultimately judged by Christ alone, not others nor our culture. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, we got to invite you guys uh, this December 8th through the 12th. We're going to be hosting a Deep Adventure Quest retreat right here in Waikiki Beach. I mentioned it just briefly a week ago. And we have so many people responding and wanting to come. But there was a little bit of confusion. We wanted everybody to know that it's for the whole family. Uh, the actual retreat portion, we want to probably try to keep it confirmation age uh, and... Um, and, and above, and that, but that retreat portion is only going to be in the mornings, uh, to ending at from 7 at Mass to 11 at, in, in the morning. So we'll get your kids uh, surfing lessons, or people can take turns babysitting each other's kids during the retreat. Most of our retreat stuff is going to be all outside. So um, come and, come to Waikiki, go to deepadventure.com, and, and uh, inquire, ask for more information, and subscribe to our newsletter at deepadventure.com too, because then you get my free book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, the audio version, I should say, and you'll be kept up to date and all that sort of stuff. So we've got with us today heavy metal, uh, uh, is it called heavy metal rock, or is it just heavy uh, metal? It's There There are so many sub-genres, Bear, that you've never even heard of. Well, we're talking we to say- Matt Swain, by the way, and he's a sub-genre. Would, would Aristotle consider you your own, or Aquinas to consider you your own? Species? I don't know. They might parse me out pretty rough. <laughs> That's, what, uh, I don't know if I want to be under that kind of scrutiny. You're your own species, I think. There you have it. There you have it. I'm a human being. As Aquinas says, every angel is its own species. Everyone, everyone well, of us is uniquely you know, created. But as John Paul II reminds us, we're all unique and unrepeatable. So there you have it. I thank God in some cases, right? Maybe indeed, indeed. No, you can only, <laughs> only handle one of you, man. One of Matt's way. Hey, Matt, though, so, so you were saying about, we were talking about your, your heavy metal music. And then you were talking about how the Protestant churches are kind of a, they may, each church kind of has its own almost like demographic, where in the Catholic Church we're all mixed in there together. Um, but what else did you uh, think, what else would you see in the difference, especially as a musician, between like the worship in a Protestant church vis-a-vis a Catholic church? Oh man, how much time do you have? <laughs> Just, uh, it's a huge question. Uh, it's a huge question. You know, for, for me, we kind of had... Uh, and most of the churches that I uh, grew up in had no kind of liturgy. Um, we sang some songs that we found particularly uplifting, uh, and that, you know, could have been old hymns. I always more gravitated towards the older hymns. You, you did? Know. Did yeah. you ever do a so, heavy rock version of one? I rocked really hard outside of church, but inside of church, give me the John and Charles Wesley stuff. Um, I'm still the same way today, by the way. My playlist that I cruise to down the road is a little rough and, and rocking, but give me the give me the chant and mass, right? Right. Um, I want my church to be church and my rock to be rock. You know, there's a yeah. place for everything. Huh. Uh, but uh, this whole question of worship, um, and there's so many ways to talk about this, but uh, the praise and worship phenomenon really launched um, big time when I was in my uh, late teens and early 20s. And, yeah. and I think it sort of confused the whole question of what worship is. Praise and worship was essentially kind of understood as a musical genre. It's the thing that you did. You sang praise and worship songs before you heard the sermon mm-hmm. um, in church. And, and you could buy a praise and worship albums, which would all be songs about how God is amazing and how we lift our eyes and hearts to him mm-hmm. and, and that sort of thing. And I think this is part of why uh, Protestants don't understand um, what Catholics are doing in the Mass, or especially with uh, devotion to Our Lady or to the saints, because them praise and worship is a genre. For us, praise is one thing. Worship is another thing, oh. right? Praise is like, you know, saying something complimentary about anybody, and like I could praise you for the fantastic job that, you know, you know, you do leading beach catechisms or, or well, whatever you want to. to do you with, go uh, right ahead. Know, feel like feel free to. <laughs> Indeed, but I would never worship you, Bear. And if I did, I hope you smack me. Um, yeah, I hope you do someday. Which, um, right, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> praise and worship are kind of two different things. Um, and, and, you know, also, uh, Catholic worship is always bound up in sacrifice. And there was no sacrifice in the, in the, um, in the churches that I grew up in. They were not liturgical. There was no, no sense that it, on the once a month we had Holy Communion um, that it was a sacrifice that was taking place. It was just a, a nice way to remember what Jesus has done for us. So, yeah, that right. whole question of, of, you know, how do you worship God was, a, was a very up in the air. And it ended up being, well, what, what kind of music do I like? Mm. What kind that's, of music makes that's the me chur- feel good? That's the church I'll go to, right? That has my kind of music, right? Something. Right. Yeah. And and then and ultimately, who are you appeasing with your worship when you do that? Or ple- or or pleasing. Yeah. Right. 
you're not pleasing God, you're appeasing yourself. Yeah. You know, I know going to... Uh, yeah, a very, very self-centered way of, lo of looking at worship. That's a very profound statement. I know I went to a... a <laughs> no, it is. Is it about you and yeah. your love for music, or is it about the Lord? And I, Or that type of genre of music or whatever. And I know I went to a, a really, uh, I guess, a mega church once in California. And um, the first... 20 to 30 minutes was really a show it felt more like a concert mm -hmm. you know it was more it was a production um and and so what kind of cultural shock did you experience when you first went into a catholic service yeah well it was, it, there are a few different things you know i had built myself up for a long time before i ever darken the doors of a Catholic church to go to mass. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to go in there and I'm not going to understand all the Latin. And uh, will I stick out like a sore thumb with all the monks in there chanting? And, you know, will I be able to see the altar from all the cloud of incense? Well, I ended up going into like a seventies mass. Like, <laughs> you know, it was like not a whole lot different musically than what I'd been used to, but there was this sense that was like, wow, they didn't talk for very long. They didn't give a very long lesson, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, a sermon. Um, you know, and there were other things. I, I think I sort of cut my teeth the most by going to daily mass because that's when I was sort of felt like I could get in there and sort of analyze what was what was actually happening. You know, you can get up, sit a little closer, mm -hmm. right? It's a little quieter. You can kind of see and hear what's going on differently. And there's this thing that would happen sometimes at uh, daily mass. And I, it just jarred me the first few times it, it, it happened where the priest would just get up there and read a gospel passage he wouldn't preach at all. He'd just go over there and sit down. And here I was from a, 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 a Bible background, you know, a sola scriptura background, Bible only, and the concept of just reading the Word of God and letting it sit and just everybody's quiet mm. for a minute and just let it soak, just let the Word speak for itself. I was like, what? What is going on here? Um, it was it was intriguing and fascinating. I loved it today in the Liturgy of the Hours. Of course, this is a recorded show, but in the Liturgy of the Hours today, it was a quote um, from Chronicles, I think, where it says, my word will not return to me void. What I speak will be. And and to just sit and, and meditate on God's word is 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 powerful. What did you think about the fact when, he, when uh, everybody stood to hear the gospel? I mean, we sit for the Old Testament and the Psalms, but then the the gospel is elevated, and then everybody stands, and then the, yeah. then the priest kisses the gospel before he speaks. Yeah, it was you know, and I heard Bible sermon after Bible sermon for my whole life. I mean, I, I fell in love from with the scriptures from hearing people passionately preach from them, and mm -hmm. revival service services, and Sunday nights, and Sunday mornings, and Wednesday nights. But never in my Bible loving background would we ever ever conceived of the pastor coming down the middle aisle holding the book over his head in Boston gold, you know, and kissing it and opening mm -hmm. it. And we all stand. I mean, there was never a sense of that. It was, it was a different kind of um, perspective on what the word of God is like, you know, in some senses, there's this um, sort of Protestant orientation towards you're there. So you can hear something that's going to help you with your life. It's going to help you with your relationship right. with God or, or, God or with each other you. or with each other. There's or, a, and or with your career. There's a lot of all that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, help your marriage, help you be a better parent, help you uh, understand God's will for your life. There's never, a, I don't want to say never, but the, there's a sense that, that I got as I was first attending Mass, like, it doesn't even matter if I'm here. Something is happening, whether I'm in this building or not. Um, God is being, there, there's this sense in which if you go into a cathedral that has been built to the glory of God, that the that God is being worshipped before you walk in there mm. and it, you're not adding to <laughs> really much of anything you're just participating in something and that was that was a strange thing for me because worship for me had always been like well i got something out of worship today because i felt god speak to me oh. um, not, a, not a sense that like something is happening whether i feel it or not did you did you, you know that painting in the sistine museum there's a painting where there's the saints below worshiping the lord and then there's kind of like the this little difference and then there's the saints above mm -hmm. all worshiping the lord and when you're at adoration you're joined with the saints or at mass you're, you're joined with the saints in heaven this, from all time and with the saints here that are worshiping and it is it is it is different it's profoundly d different and i like like what jim mcgaffigan said if you haven't been to mass for a while 
It's still going on. You know, it's going on still with happening. or without you. It's still, still going happening. On. Yeah, with or without you. I mean, I love uh, I love the Protestant worship, and, and I and I you know and, and I, I I mean I um, and I love my Protestant brothers and sisters, but um, there's just this there's just this something deeper, and I always call it like the deep end of the pool. You know, there's just something yeah. much more much much deeper and more profound. We're talking with Matt Swain. Tell us your ministers. You got thirty seconds. So your Sunrise Morning okay. Show host. And then what are you doing at the Journey Home Network? Yeah, the Coming Home Network. Coming is, Home Network, uh, sorry. The Coming Home Network, which produces the Journey Home, which okay. is why it's confusing. But we are, and if anybody's listening and in this situation, we are a ministry of welcome and accompaniment for anybody at all from any background you can imagine interested in Catholicism. Uh, we are a huge network of people who have made the journey and are here to walk with you. Let so, me tell you a confession. Network.org. So yeah. you invited me to write a 4,000 page, 4,000 word, maybe a little summary of my return to the church. But I was with Mar Marcus Grodi's son. I don't know where we were. Oh, yeah, John Mark. John yeah. Mark. And it was Lent, and it was a Friday, and I had forgotten, and he and I went out to get some grinds, and I ordered a cheeseburger. So oh. I'll probably never be allowed on that. Any oh, part John of Mark. He's awesome, isn't he? He's great. He's fantastic. And I got to go with his. Got a family. philosophy degree. You got to have him on. Oh, dude. Yeah, I should have. I yeah. think I had him on once before. I should get him on again, though. Um, but I, I got to go to mass at, at Steubenville with him and his family. We're talking with my good friend Matt Swaim. He's also the host with on, on the Sunrise Morning Show at UWTN. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. I remember once I was interviewing the surfing priest, Father Don Calloway, and I said, Father, when you come in after a great session, you've ridden some really great waves, do your friends come up to you and say, man, you were awesome, or do they say, man, those waves were awesome? Surfers get credit to the waves. Uh, we, uh, what, one of the beautiful things about a surfer is when he surfs a wave, it tends to reveal the power and the beauty of the wave. When it's big and, you're, and people are surfing a half a mile or a quarter of a mile out, it's hard to even see how big that wave is. But when a surfer drops in, and you may not even see him because he's so far out, but you see that white ribbon, the thread of him surfing down the face of that wave, uh, it shows you how big and how powerful and how awesome and how beautiful that wave is. Even though you really don't see the surfer, you see the result of his carving down the wave. We give glory to the wave. That's where we as Christians receive our power, is the power of the Holy Spirit. And a surfer knows, I've dropped in on really big waves and done the bottom turn and just go shooting down the line, and I'll get so far out in front of that wave that I lose the power, and I have to carve and cut back and get into the power. Sometimes you begin in the Spirit and end in the flesh. There's a great move of the Lord in your life, but then you say, oh, I've got this, God, and you just keep going on in your own strength. No, God wants you to always come back, always come back to that central power of the wave, to the central uh, presence of Jesus in your life and the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the ultimate experience of a surfer is to drop in and have the barrel cover over you, where you're totally hidden inside the barrel. And believe me in there, it's loud and it's powerful and it's the greatest experience of life. To be hidden in Christ is even greater. To be able to drop in and when people see you coming in your ministry and in your love and the way you live your life, they forget you're even there and they see Jesus. Be hidden in Christ. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. 
Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wasink Adventure. We want to invite the mama bears uh, to uh, go to our website, our email newsletter. Uh, is You can go there and subscribe, and you get, uh, you'll get you get a copy of our morning show sent to you every Saturday. Our, I mean, our, our evening Saturday show, the Bear Wasink Adventure, sent to you every Saturday morning. But we, we have a special place in our heart for the mama bears, and we want you to know that. Right now, if you go to if you become one of our uh, mama bears, you not only get a long ride home coffee mug and my autograph of my latest uh, book, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue, but someone sent us about forty uh, mama bear. I mean, teddy bears. They're little teddy bears, and they're bikers, and uh, and they're ma- and they're and they're Catholic bikers. They wear <laughs> they wear a vest, and they're really really cute. So any ma- anyone who joins the mama bears until we run out, we'll get a get we'll send that along with you too. And we want to invite the men to join Bears Man Cave. We've had a lot of people joining lately, and. Uh, and it's basically a place where it's a secret Facebook group, but please don't go to Facebook and try to become a member there. You need to go to deepadventure.com to join and just click on where it says Bears Man Cave. And dudes, um, we have uh, we have a great uh, place there to challenge each other, encourage each other, inspire one another, pray for each other in every realm of our lives. And we about every week, every couple of weeks or so, we have a Zoom video chat where we all meet up and talk stories. So a uh, place there for the man cave. But we want to let the mama bears how much know how much we love and appreciate their prayers. We're talking with Matt Swaim. He's uh, the host of the Sunrise Morning Show and one of the first people that I got to meet uh, when I was first starting my radio show, actually. I went and visited you. You guys there in person, and that I felt so welcomed. I just thought these are my peeps. So yeah, welcome. it was fun. Welcome back to the show, Matt. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks so much for having me, man. I always uh, enjoy catching up with you. I'm I'm glad that we have you. You're on our show every every week. Uh, yeah. So it's always kind of fun when we get to turn the tables. Although as Paul, our uh, engineer at the Sunrise Morning Show, said when I told him I was doing this, he's like, "You don't turn Bear's not turning the tables on you. He's turning the tide on you." <laughs> That's Perfect cool. Hey, here. speaking of that, so you love the ocean, don't you? You live near the ocean, or you're. A- well, I live near the swamp. I'm in the D.C. area, so, so you're uh, near the bay. Near, near the, the bay. bay. Yeah. But it seemed to me we talked once, and you you get down to the water quite a bit, or no? A little bit. And you know, actually, I live close to a reservoir. I get out in the canoe, and uh, you know, I uh, get a lot of crappie fishing in. Oh I yeah, can, you are so. you looking for crappie, or that's what you're catching? I catch whatever bites, man. But I mean, are you so. looking for bass, or in, and you end up with perch and crappie, or are you... well, it's a lot of perch, man. The perch are the aggressive ones. You know, yeah. there's certain things that you can't understand about the gospels and what Jesus is teaching unless you've gone fishing. A few unless times, you fish, so. yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. What oh well, you... this is what this is this this could be like a three hour exploration too. Well well Jesus tells people to be fishers of men, his apostles, right? And well people uh, can see I'm wearing a a Hawaiian fish hook. Oh nice. Kinda like what the is Maui that so you can catch the the Huma Huma Anuka Nuka Apu ah with that? Numa Numu Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua ah. No, you're not allowed to spear that fish. But this is okay. the uh this is State the State fish. Yeah, I let people People ask me about this. It's like the Hook Maui War. And they ask me, and I go, well, that's because huh. I'm a Catholic evangelist. I'm a fisher of men. Well, there you have it. Fisher of men. So, so well, talk think story. about it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So uh, if you're going to you know, give somebody the gospel, you can't just pick whatever bait you think looks pretty and throw it down there and expect to get anything. Yeah. Right? you got to kind of know what a perch thinks like. What a bass thinks Isn't like. Isn't that weird? You Where actually, they actually are. You actually get into the head of a bass, right? Or, a, right. or a, yeah, yeah, they're all a walleye, so different from a perch. Yeah, you there's know. certain fish that you got to fish real shallow, and there's certain fish you got to fish real deep. And how you like hook some them? Of the when, how do you fish, set the hook? And, is, yeah. Oh my gosh! Some of the fish you got to show them just a little bit of flash. Other mm-hmm. fish you got to just let it sit and just move it sort of slow. It, this is, it's the ultimate analogy for evangelization. I mean, it really is. You know, uh, some of those fish are just they're slow moving. And you got to hit them in the nose with it, uh, <laughs> right, to get their attention. Mm-hmm. Um, some of some of them you can't reel it in too fast, right? Or you're going to lose them. Some of them have really soft mouths. If you try and bring them in too fast, once you think that they're on, they're not actually on. You and just, how many just, of us the, just their lips are right, like you, that in the real world? You bring them in, and just their lips are right. on the hook. <laughs> yeah. 
to- right. And, and and think about how many people we know who uh, were not looking for some big, deep thing. They just wanted something that just, you know, turned their attention from what they were focused mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Or some people really do need you to go deep. Or some people need you to just sort of hold still and listen to them for a second. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the ultimate analogy. When Jesus was laying this out, I mean, it's 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 perfect. And he was speaking, of course, the language of people who all they knew was fishing until he came. Right, along. that's so right. So this made sense to them. Yeah, it really is true. It's it's discerning the Lord, li- listening to the Lord, and then the Holy Spirit action plan. We call it Holy Spirit action plan. <laughs> when we're one on one with people, like I'll see someone, I'll just it's happened to me probably three times in the last three weeks. Uh, just saying, I need to talk to that person. And somehow, yeah. because it's the Lord's nudge, they're open to you when you talk with them, and <clears throat> good things can come out of that. But I know it's like some some you have to just plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds, um, and like like I would say that'd be like a walleye, right? You just kind of let it let it just kind of sit oh, yeah. there. When they when they come and kind of taste it, you got to let them. Well, we had the example <clears throat> uh, this last week. We were out deep sea fishing and. Uh, uh, a, a billfish, some sort of billfish, hit our bait, and they'll hit it, and then they're just going to kind of cruise with it and then hit, check it out, and then they'll hit it again. And you've got to set the hook. And <clears throat> we yeah. didn't react in time you know, to do that. And then the other day I was out spearfishing, and I got a really nice big, maybe two-and-a-half-foot parrotfish. He came out of the wow. murky he, but it, this is he came out of the murky water because they're doing some dredging out here. And I released the spear, and, uh, and then I had to release... I, the spear hit him. It's not I, not a bullet. It's a sling, you know, that I use. And uh, and then I had to let go of my spear because he was going to wriggle free. And I had to chase him into the murky water. And unfortunately, this time he got away, right? Because I saw my spear laying on the bottom of the ocean. I had to go get my spear. It came loose. But we but you know, it's not just I, I, the fish was there. It came out of murky water, which is often coming out of. You think of it as a Christian. Sh- murky water is sharky water, right? A predator will get you when you're in the shadows or in the murkiness of. They'll mistake you for something the, the, that you're not. Well, the near occasion is yeah. sin. You know, if you're in that murky place, Satan can pick you off. But I, this was my chance to kind of, I would say, in a way, rescue this fish from the murky water. But then mm-hmm. I had, but I, then I pursued that fish, right? I, I followed that fish, or some, you know, because it's like a, a someone's in, in a situation where it's a, a moment of e- e- evangelistic effort can really have an impact on them. But others, for the most part, like when people at work and people that you know, it's it's living your life, and from not time to time having an encouraging word or being aware of them. Yeah, and, and some days you'll go out and you're like, I'm going to catch a bunch of crappie today. Crappie aren't biting. The perch are. Yeah, the right? perch are always so biting. The thing yeah. That you pre- <clears throat> yeah, the thing that you prepared for <clears throat> is not the thing that's happening, right? And uh, so you, you start to realize, well, you know what? Perch are biting. I'm going to pay attention to the perch. But how many times, uh, you know, it's so funny for um, those of us who are trying to, like, share the joy that's in us. We want to prepare the apologetics arguments, especially if we know exactly who we're about to see and we think we know what their objections are. We prepare and prepare and prepare. Like, I know exactly what I'm going to say if they come at me with something. And then you realize that's not what they're interested in at all. Right. Oh, my gosh. You know? That's so true. Like, I know that. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. People, Whatever I've prepared for is not what happens. And some people have this kind of prepared gospel line. Uh, if you died today, where would your soul go? Or, you know, the... You know that that kind mm-hmm. of gospel, the four the four step track that's out there, and they just hit people with that. They're not listening. They're not um, uh, engaging with them. They're talking at them, and we have people here on the yeah. street. I you know God bless them, but they're they're preaching loudly on the preaching Waikiki preaching on the stri- streets of Waikiki, and they're not re- they're, if anything they're pushing people. They're pushing people away. So, yeah, fishing, but we have to be You know be what's going to happen if you're out in the boat and you're yelling? You know how many fish you're going to catch if you're yelling in the boat? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, how or stop, a, even stopping zero. on the stopping. I tell on the this bo- to my son all the time. <laughs> and stop. <laughs> like, and, be quiet. You're going to scare the fish away. Yeah, the canoe echoes it, right? And then stopping on the – but, you know, i got to tell you, we when we were out <laughs> fishing with Chris Gokey, he's a – so funny. He's a bull rider. And we were talking story the other day, a bunch of us having cigars. I get, get the men together here about once a month and – we're trying to debate what's harder, surfing or golfing. And then Chris Gokey walks in. He's a bull rider. We go, what's harder, mm-hmm. surfing, golfing, or bull riding? He said golfing. <laughs> but fishing <laughs> fishing is definitely a skill. And, and you know, like in, in Montana, certain places, I don't know where all they do this, but, um, you know, Hemingway loved to fly fish. And every day they, 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 they go, you know, if you've lived in that area, spent the summer, in certain places, there will be like a dominant insect 
every week at doing mm-hmm. insect that's kind of dominant. And then what's biting? And then they use that bait. So we need to be we need to be sensitive to that. How can we wake people up to say, listen, don't just preach at people, but be alert and aware for every opportunity to share to share your faith, but in a way that they can receive it. Yeah, that's a good question, and it kind of cuts to the the question of what what's the most important thing that part of your job as a radio host and my job as a radio host it's listening right i mean mm-hmm. it's, it's hard for me everybody I... thinks it everybody thinks it's talking but the most important part of either one of our gigs is listening mm-hmm. and uh gosh how many people have we just missed an opportunity uh with because we just didn't take a chance to to let them talk for a second and figure out what was really bothering them um and that's the thing with with uh you know of course, fishing is, and you're talking about the fly fishing. I mean, some of these fly fishing guys are bug guys. I mean, they study the life cycle of the midges and like the mayflies and like everything. And they know, right. they know exactly what's... when the hatches are and everything else. They're listening to the bugs. They're listening to the fish so that they can speak the language that the fish is speaking. Right. Uh, but they don't know unless they've taken an inventory of the situation, what's going to work and what's going to, what's going to fail. And, and, and with that, I mean, how many people, you know, it's it's and, and you I'm sure you hear this all the time too. People come into us, um, either the Coming Home Network or or because we have we have feature a lot of books on the radio, they say, Well, what book can I give to my son in law? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Well th- guess what? You can't. <laughs> you know you know <laughs> we can talk- read it. The, yeah, the only book true. you can give him is you being a listener and finding out what he's hungry for. Yeah, and I think like turning on a a radio show when you're driving, like a lot of a lot of women will turn on Long Ride Home, the TV show. They know when it's going to be on, and they put it on the air. Of course, now it's on Prime Video, so people can watch it anytime they want. But oh yeah, it's great. I have a lot of testimonies where they'll just be sitting down watching TV, and they go click click, and all of a sudden it's Long Ride Home, and that that. But I'm speaking, I'm speaking in that language, right? I'm using that as bait. You know, here's guys on bikes, we're riding, we're doing this adventure, and like, wait, what did he just say about the Lord? But that may not happen. They may not really understand that till they're well into it so I, I, I lay we're kind of lay, we're setting the table inviting them in and then we could share with them the good news we're talking with Matt Swain from the Coming Home Network that hosts the Journey Home TV show on EWTN and he's a morning radio show host uh, Sunrise Morning Show on EWTN too we'll be right back hey man I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're glad you're joining us. We want to invite 
uh, the men to uh, come to our to the Bears Man Cave. You can join at deepadventure.com. If you haven't been to our website, it's pretty overwhelming, uh, but uh, you can you can see all that we're up to. We want to invite everybody to come to our big Deep Adventure Quest retreat here in Hawaii, December eighth through twelfth, uh, twenty twenty one. We have Matt Swain with us. He's the uh, host of the Sunrise Morning Show, which I get to be on once a week on Monday mornings. But I'll tell you a secret. I used to have to get up at one thirty in the morning to record that show with him here in Hawaii. And now I don't have to get up till 4. Well, it was live, but now I get to record it at 4.30 in the morning on Fridays. You see, he still won't let me sleep in. But so, so Matt, we were out. Uh, um, we talked about fishing and being fishers of men. We were out in the, in the, in the um, sports fishing boat. And we came right by some whales, and I cast my line out that way. I had my spear ready. I was ready to do the whole Ahab thing, but, you know, it didn't happen. The, the, the whales got away. What's the biggest I, fish you ever had on and lost? I mean, I've uh, I've caught some sockeye salmon in Alaska that, you know. Actually, I caught, a, I caught a northern pike that was probably, I'd say, 22 inches. You know, I'm not. I don't go in for like the huge fish. I'm not like the guy who goes for like the massive like marlins, like and stuff a muskie like that. or something, I, like, right? Yeah, I have as much fun catching like hand sized bluegill as anything. Yeah. So, do you um, catch and release? Yeah, I've caught some fun fish. Do you catch and release? Or I catch and release most of the time, yeah. mostly because whenever I start catching them, I'm like, am I gonna have enough to justify a exactly. full meal, or am yeah. I just gonna catch this one lonely <laughs> fish? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to split it three ways when we get home. You it's know, hard so too. My, all that's going to happen is it's going to stink up my kitchen. So, I know we when we when I clean it. <laughs> I know when we came back from sports fishing, we didn't get a single fish. My wife was so happy, you know, because because I can't cook oh, the yeah. fish. They clean no it. No guts though. all over the. No, all but they they the they, they clean the it. Yeah. But her her family is generations of commercial fishermen, so she's kind of kind of over oh, maybe yeah. that, <laughs> that. She but, knows that smell. <laughs> but you were saying when the fish is on, then. There's a there, there there's you know there's, they're inviting them to hear the gospel, but when they turn their attention to it, when you're fishing, what, what's the analogy between having the fish on and bringing the fish in? And, and yeah, this is huge. So uh, you know, and this is where I just see so many missed opportunities at the kind of corporate parish level. Um, you know, when when the fish is biting, when the fish is is on, you better be paying attention, and or you're going to lose the fish, right? Um, you have to know how to how to bring it in once it's on, and, and this I think is an analogy that goes so well um, to some of the frustrating things that we deal with at the Coming Home Network. You know, we deal with a lot of people who are just doing Google searches to find us, like how do I become Catholic, and that's how they find us. <laughs> you know, that's what they typed in. Um, but then so many of them have come to us and stayed with us and and use us as a sounding board because they finally got the nerve to call up their local Catholic parish, and the parish said. Well, that's uh, that's interesting that you'd be you know you know interested in joining the Catholic Church. Well, why don't you come by on Thursday and we'll have you fill out some paperwork. Um, our classes have already started, so uh, next fall you can come back and maybe we can look at RCIA. No, the fish is on, man. Mm -hmm, <laughs> the mm -hmm. fish is on. You know why not say, oh, that's amazing. You want to be part of our church? Uh, I can't tell you how much of a blessing it is for me to be Catholic. What's drawing you to the church? Yeah, inviting like, them. Just yeah. take that moment and feed on the hunger. Well, they call the some of the Protestant churches call them call themselves seeker friendly churches, and going into a Catholic church is like sure. a cultural cultural shock. What are those people wearing long robes for to start with? You know, and what's all this about? But when someone seeks, it would be really good for someone to to. I know the priests are, are priests so busy, but to have someone that they can say, well, here's here's someone uh, who heads up the theology on tap. Maybe they would be good for you to talk to too, or here's a men's group here. Or you know to immediately engage them with a small group that will help them carry them through because I mean the Catholic Church is you know in t since beginning of the church there was that uh, that second generation or first generation there was you're going to wait two years or more to go through your preparation to become a, to be to be baptized but in the meantime there should be an engagement uh, we're we're working with a man right now we're not working with him he's joined our man cave um, I think it's, I think it's I think it's Trace Big Dog. I think is his middle name, and he's big old biker dude. Oh yeah, he's Big Dog. A, You've talked about Big Dog on our show before. Yeah, I like this guy. He's an evangelist. He's a community builder, and he's on his way to becoming a Catholic. And uh, but right away, his priest engaged him, and they're having got dialogue, and he's connected him with people. So you're right. We need to. We need to. Once the fish is on the line, we need to bring him in. But you know, um, the priest isn't the most likely person people are going to go to. It's going to be you. 
So it's your kuleana when you meet someone like that to just bring, hey, why don't you come to Mass with us? Or there's a Theology on Tap meeting, there's a men's conference, just bring them in that way. And then, but, you, but once God brings someone like that into your life, you have a kuleana to continue to, to, um, to just participate in what the Lord's doing. And the cool thing about, like, if I were ever to, go, ever to go fly fishing, which I've never done, I would definitely have to have a guide and an instructor. And when you're out sport fishing, you have those guys that are experts guiding the boat. Um, so God's your captain of the fishing boat. He's going to bring you to the right waters. Uh, don't think it's up to you. It's, all, it's who the Father draws to the Son. But it's kind of up to you to be aware of, oh, the Lord's telling me to throw my net out on this side. So i got to ask the big question. Everybody's, everybody's, it's funny how we started talking about fishing today. But, and, uh, um, and by the way, as a, as a spear fisherman, I'm a hunter. It's a different thing than, than throwing your net out or, or throwing a line out. It's a di- there's different ways of fishing. You know, like I go out in pursuit which is what more of an evangelist would do, but we're all evangelists. But what everybody wants to know is, do you have you ever ice fished? I have not. Now, my brother-in-law does it in Canada, back when they used to allow, allow U.S. citizens into Canada. Uh, but I've never <laughs> done it. I've never done it. Um, it's something I would love to try probably once. Yeah, because I did it I once. I prefer... You did it once. I prefer yeah. to be like kind of warm. And if you got to, I don't want to make myself too warm on the ice. I've seen people do kind of like those ice lodges and stuff. Oh, yeah. Stuff. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to have space heater when I'm sitting on ice. Well, as um, long as there's but, a football uh, game and your beer's on ice too. Yeah, yeah. But then is it really sport? You know? I know, uh, it's, but it's so gnarly when you talk to people that ice fish. They're just like, I, I took someone surfing about 20 years ago. And he goes, oh, man, this is almost as good as ice fishing. I'm like, what did you just say? <laughs> So, so you've never ice fished, you know, you've never never ice fished fished. and you know, fly fishing is one of those things that I do. Um, and I'm not a very talented. Oh, you do fly fish. You do. Oh yeah, I do fly fish. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, but for me, it's not even so much about catching the fish. It's about getting in your hip waders and like tromping through a stream and like getting into the woods and finding a place. Oh yeah. And uh, I almost don't care if I even catch anything. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of true of just fishing in general. Maybe it's a. But oh, dude! When I had, I used to have a cabin up by Glacier Park, and I'm taking my wife there this summer. We're going to be speaking in the Boise uh, to the Salt and Light Radio people. Oh, there. great! Shout people. out to them. Oh, I love them. Brian Howell out there, the Voice, and uh, and uh, John Keenan, and others out there. We just love them. But we're gonna, I'm gonna take her up to Glacier Park, and maybe we'll get a chance to go fly fishing. I just I, when I had my cabin there, I always thought, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, and I never did. So, what else is the Lord speaking to you about? What else? What else is God laying on you these days? I mean, all kinds of things. You know, we're recording this during Lent, and uh, every Lent you just sort of kind of, you know, take a take a fresh inventory of of what's what's going on. And I, I think uh, one of the things that, and I was mentioning this to you before the show, uh, just kind of understanding um, the way that God works. I've been trying to like single out and pick a line from the liturgy to zero in on every week, and the one that keeps on coming back to me, like. You know, it has come back to me several weeks is, is from one of the Eucharistic prayers where you hear the, the, the pastor say, you even fashioned uh, a remedy out of mortality itself. And I'm going to mess up this next part. This is so, so that cool. the cause of our downfall might be the cause of our reconciliation. And uh, just kind of understanding, you know, God's control over everything. Uh, that Satan sort of had this master plan of how he was going to ruin God's perfect perfection uh in the garden mm-hmm. of eden and mm-hmm. and it was to introduce sin and therefore death into the world but what's the weapon that god uses to defeat satan it's death which is the very thing that satan tried to ruin creation with it's like well you're a martial arts guy it's like the ultimate metaphysical judo right right it's like satan punches and god grabs his fist and drags him um so it, that, that's something I've been I've been thinking about a lot because it, it kind of plays into this larger question of how does God work? Um, how does God take uh, absolute garbage situations and bring good out of them? How does he uh, look at all the frustrations of the year that was 2020 and has extended on, right? And mm-hmm. bring good and, and grace and, and, and benefit out of it. Um, I've been thinking a lot about that because you know, those are the things that are impossible to see in the moment. But as you get a little hindsight, as you get a little perspective, you think, wow, I remember how bummed out I was in this moment. But there's no way I'd be doing this particular thing that I'm doing right now if it hadn't been for that thing 
that forced me into a corner back Isn't then. that interesting? And um, then sometimes it's that thing that you're doing right now, you may say that in heaven too. Yeah. Some things yeah. really don't get resolved so easily here on earth, but but that's the that's the ultimate goal. But I know God, what what uh, the enemy meant for good, the Lord can He can reap what He didn't sow. Yeah. You know, and I know, like in uh, in martial arts training, my favorite thing to do is to train in knife fighting, because not not a real knife, but I mean, I like I like to train in knife fighting because you know where the you usually know where the attack's going to come from. First of all. Instead of a head butt or two arms or two legs. It's going to come from the hand holding the knife. It's going to come from that hand. (laughs) So you know where the attack's coming from. And then the funniest thing is I was (laughs) using this as an example at a men's conference. I had a buddy of mine with me in Florida. Okay. Underline the word Florida. And I said, I want you to attack me like this, and then this is going to happen. You're going to end up on the ground, and I'm going to give you this this training knife. And he, he... you know, so I said, you got to attack with intent, but don't attack too fast because I want people to see what's happening. I don't want you to get hurt. So he attacked me with intent, and I did a wrist throw, which part of that, you know, took, was able to just say, you know, take the knife uh, and then slit his throat with it as I did a wrist throw and took him to the ground. <clears throat> then his gun went flying across the church. <laughs> <laughs> He had it in his pocket. Oh, my goodness. But he said, dude, I don't know you're going to take me down that fast. And I go, well, you know, I told you it was going to be a little bit faster. But anyway, um, it is that truth that as, as Satan attacked with the weapon of death, Jesus destroyed him with death. By dying, you destroyed our death, you know. Yeah, rising, rising you restored our life. We've been talking with my good friend Matt Swain. we got to go, Matt. I was th- oh, man, that's always too fast. It seems like we're like, should be able to do at least a few more segments. But anyway, Matt Swain with the Going Home Network, Journey Home. Coming Home Network. Coming Home, home Network. network. They're coming home. I'm going home. The Journey <laughs> Home TV show, the Sunrise Morning Show, uh, the famous uh, Matt Swaim. And Matt, we got to get to see if you can. We got to have you and Father Don Calloway do a beard growing contest and see who. Oh, we got to do it. Got to yeah. make it happen. No, just don't, don't invite any like Eastern Rite Catholics because they will shame us. Well, all he looks Eastern go- Rite. Oh, he just shaved though. Oh, Don did, but he, Father Don did. But yeah, he he totally looked like he was going Eastern right on us last time, the time before I saw him. Okay, we'll be right back, you guys, next week with more of the Bear Wasser Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Where the, can they find you, Matt? chnetwork.org and sunrisemorningshow.com. That's S-O-N, Rise Morning Show. Sunrise Morning. Say it like you do on the radio show. Sunrise that. Morning Show. Okay. All right. Aloha, everybody. Till next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Want to say it with me? Aloha. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.